Oh, please, please keep eating too. This is this is a great turnout. I, I just want to say thank you for letting me come up. Um, usually, state of cities I've been to, I would, I'd be in the background. So at least I get two minutes of your time. Um, it's hard to believe I've been here nine months. I know it's not a long time, and I'm not counting, but it's. It went really, really fast for me. Um, I, everyone's been extremely welcoming. I want to say thank you to everybody. You've either come and visited me, you've asked me to come and visit. It's, it's been a tremendous outpouring of, of people and, and everything about the city has been just what I thought it would be. So I'm, I'm happy for that. The problem I see is all these challenges that are in front of us. So, and I guess I'm trying to turn that into how do we make those challenges into successes and that's my exciting part. I know I was asked and questioned about the challenges and I said, yes, that's who I am. I love to take a challenge on. So we're getting there. We're gonna be getting through a lot of this. I know when I started, I told everyone that there are these opportunities out there for us and they're still there. And I know if I can get everyone in this room, the business owners, the citizens, city staff, anyone else we can think of, we'll, we'll be very successful. And the city is going to be a shining jewel on the central coast very soon. And that was it for my speech. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to see, you know, my thing is I get to announce our mayor. She's going to be giving the presentation today. So I'm going to just be quick and announce Janelle Osborne to come up and say something about the city. Thank you, Jim, for that introduction. And we are very glad to have you here in our community. And yes, it's a good thing you like challenges because we have quite a bit on our horizon. So thank you all for being here today. The State of the City Address is one more way to communicate how the city is working for you, our community. This is your city, and we all want to improve it. With today's presentation, I invite you to celebrate in recent successes despite the limited resources, as well as take a closer look at the growing challenges our city is facing. Let's start off with a video featuring some highlights in the city of Lompoc from 2018.
That's some amazing people doing stellar work for our wonderful community. It's also really fun to use pictures to tell you a thousand words so that I don't have to talk as much about some of the successes. There have been quite a few despite the lack of budget that we had this year. So let's move on to some outstanding milestones that we've had in 2018. Our city staff has continued to make great strides this past year. Lompoc celebrated 130 years. We welcomed our new city manager, Jim Troop. We had our first ever district elections. We even provided workshops to inform the community about this new system. You have a new mayor, and as a result, a new council member in Gilda Cordova, who was appointed to fill the spot left vacant after the mayoral election. We are very happy to have you on board, Gilda. Your city council reflects the community demographics more now than it ever has. One of the most notable and public accomplishments was the San Inez Riverbed cleanup. Thank you to our Lompoc Police Department, our Triage Center Coordinator, our Environmental Coordinator, and all of the partner agencies that allowed us to assist 69 clients from the riverbed at the triage center. 27 of those were housed or reunited with family. Eight received drug and or mental health treatment. And many are continuing to be assisted because of those solid relationships developed at the triage center with the police department and all of our partners. The cleanup of the riverbed itself by the numbers. 925,000 pounds of trash and debris taken out of the river. 500 pounds of human waste, 60 quarts of needles, five truckloads of tarps, and demolition of seven structures. And then hundreds of acres mowed to clear the overgrowth. So thank you for all that hard work. Thank you for the investment. Thank you for the support. We're still working to recover costs from the county, state, and federal sources. We are also still planning to monitor and maintain this, so that will need to be a part of our budget discussion. Oops. So, the efficient and diligent efforts prevented the loss of life in the riverbed, given the flooding that arrived in January of this year. The city's engineering division also completed construction of a multi-year riverbank stabilization, pro stabilization project along Riverside Drive, which shifts the river flow away from the western bank and back into the central channel, reducing the erosion of the riverbank. Staff secured approximately 75% of the project costs through FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Award. There have been some exceptional makeovers at our city parks and recreational fields, thanks to the support of community organizations and many more are underway. Thompson Park, had improvements including new restrooms, baseball fields, dugouts, bleachers, a scoreboard, and a press box. At Pioneer Park, as you can see from the time-lapse video, we demolished a dilapidated restroom and replaced it with a new ADA-compliant restroom. Lompoc Fire Department. We had numerous mutual aid requests from the county and state levels this year. LFD responded with equipment and staff to some of the most notable fires, Delta, Carr, Cranston, Calamthan in Northern California, and the Woolsey Fire in Southern California for over 70 days. Wildfires within the urban interface and the training and support we provide all serve as vital components of our department. Joining other communities in their time of need is part of our mission, and in the event we need help, this assistance will be reciprocated. These mutual aid services do provide overtime reimbursement and equipment use fees to our community. As a member of the Santa Barbara County Urban Search and Rescue Regional Task Force, LFD responded to more incidents than ever before in the history of the task force. 2018 started with the Montecito mudslides, followed by the campfire in Paradise, and ended with deployments during the recent rain events in Montecito for possible debris, debris flows. 
In 2018, there were 4,153 calls, 70% of those calls being for medical aid, and 921 of those calls utilizing Rescue One. Only 143 were fire incidents. First, we have a new police chief. Welcome, Chief Mariani. Most notably, the Police Department's Detective Bureau has maintained a 70% rate of clearance of crimes. Additionally, all Lompoc felony assaults have been solved. This is impressive given the constant low staffing numbers at PD. So, please continue helping our police department fight crime. Utilize the app to report non-emergency matters. On your phone, go to your app store, look up Lompoc Police Department, and download it. It is free. Just as a reminder, and to be clear, still call 911 for emergencies. But the app is great for identifying graffiti issues, abandoned vehicles, any issues that are non-emergency. The police department made it a point not only to train the officers in basic first aid, which is required by the California Police Officer Standards and training, but has also certified a majority of its officers in trauma first aid. As a result, in 2018, officers applied tourniquets and chest seal bandages to at least eight victims. All of these victims were transported to local hospitals and made full recovery thanks to this equipment and the first aid provided by our officers. I'd like to note that much of this equipment was purchased either by the officers themselves or by the police foundation. The foundations behind our city departments do such important work and we encourage you to support them when and as you are able. For the tiny footprint but tons of knowledge it supports and houses, the library saw an attendance of its programs almost doubled to 18,000 last year. Charlotte's Web, our bookmobile, added more locations of services to children at Bridge House, Recovery Way Home, and some of the low-income housing neighborhoods, especially in the vulnerable areas. The library also had a great success with its summer reading program. Total event and program attendance was 3,676. That's a 4% increase over 2017. That's 65 programs and events this summer, 10,154 books read, and 2,043 new readers signed up. Our library is a tremendous asset to our residents of all ages, providing a safe place for those experiencing homelessness, homelessness while searching for jobs and support information, for seniors who utilize it at no cost or low cost entertainment, while also maintaining mental health through reading and socializing, to the after school homework support that so many kids of all ages utilize the library for. And last but not least, it's an evening event center for a lot of local nonprofits. Our beautiful stone pines. We love that canopy on South H. This year, Urban Forestry completed an extensive trimming of the Italian stone pines. The trimming is designed to pull the canopy back and center it more over the trunks of the trees, reducing limb failure, property damage, and increasing public safety. Now, is it not only safer to live, park, and walk under these majestic landmarks, but it extends the life of these amazing ladies. not only brought these departmental successes, but many other departments contributed to the improvement of Lompoc. Several new concepts, projects, and programs are leading to new results in 2019. Last year, at this particular event, we mentioned some new businesses coming to Lompoc. And now, several of those have opened or are opening. That would be Ulta, Five Below, and Famous Footwear. We have our first cannabis retail store in Leaf Dispensary. And we've had some wonderful locally owned businesses and unique services open here, like Teaklish, Valley Juice, Sweet Baking, Amour Boutique, The One Room Coffee Shop, CK Wings, and Hangar 7, just to name a few. Thank you to all of you for seeing the need to have your business in Lompoc. And just of note, we have a major employer in town, Denmat, and they have, since arriving in Lompoc, 
acquired four new businesses that have all been relocated to this plant. In 2017, they added 27 positions. And in the first quarter of 2019, they have nearly added 23 more. Ground has broken on the new CHC 28,000 square foot medical clinic on West Ocean Avenue. You can see it when you leave, right out here. I saw the trucks out today mowing and moving things around. It will expand services for Lompoc, including mental health and dental care, both currently requiring trips to Santa Maria for CHC clients. Not only will it have additional services, but new living wage jobs will be added to our workforce, such as dental hygienist, physicians, assistants, and healthcare management. And it has the benefit of being next door to the Dewey Senior Citta, so that it's easy access for those seniors utilizing CHC's services. Last year, the facade program was implemented. Several existing businesses benefited from our economic development facade program. This offers a rebate of up to $5,000 and a loan of up to $15,000 with no interest. I want to thank Grocery Outlet, Jail Biz Salon and Spa, Earl's RV, and Mary Sharp CPA for using the program to date. Your businesses are looking wonderful. I want to encourage you to consider using this program if you would like to improve your front of your building or the surrounding landscape. Maybe even think about using it to turn back on those beautiful neon lights. Wouldn't we love to see the glow of Lompoc in the evening and return the nostalgia of car cruises to our community? The Community Development Block Grant and Human Service Grant provided almost 113,000 in grant funds to numerous nonprofit agencies providing services to our Lompoc residents. What can I say? You know, I'm a will, single mom with five kids. I couldn't ask for more, you know, having a CD loan. It's something that most of the people we need right now, you know, we, it's really hard right now to buy a house, to buy a house, you know. It's me being a single mom, I would never thought of purchasing a house, you know, but for CD loan. The Lombok Home Buyers Assistance Program assisted 30 low-income households in purchasing homes in the city. These loans provide up to $65,000 in down payment assistance and grants up to $7,500 for closing costs. While these are vital to our community, these programs have been placed on hold until we return community development staffing to a level that can effectively support and deliver this program to our community. We are looking to continue the forward progress we've made. We will continue to build relationships and expand services with your support. City staff is committed to improving customer service, streamlining processes, and reducing costs. Some of the ways these goals will be achieved this year are continuing to implement the modern financial software system and replacing the city's outdated finance programs. Next up, the utility billing and cash sharing section. So look forward to unveiling our new online bill payment system to you. We also are wrapping up our comprehensive zoning update, and that should be out to you by this summer. We want the community's involvement in crime prevention and reducing violent crimes. Consider being a part of a neighborhood watch, volunteering for graffiti removal team, support the youth programs in the Boys and Girls Club, the Y, City Recreation and the Library. And we will continue to support those of us experiencing homelessness as we work with our partners to address this issue and maintain our cleaned up riverbed. Now for the elephant in the room, the city budget. The elephant isn't going to move on its own. Frustration and anger won't eliminate it. Being proactive can reduce its impact on our quality of life. We, as City Council, along with City staff, have been seeking input from our community through surveys, workshops, and the online worksheet to help prioritize the goals for our city as we plan our fiscal 2019-21 budget cycle. You have spoken, and here's a look at the results from our recent Lompoc Priority Survey, which received almost 1,000 responses. We discussed these results at our priorities workshop last month, at which time almost 60 community members participated. 
economic development and public safety ranked 78% and 77% respectively. Additional priorities included housing, homelessness, crime, tourism, and the city image. As a result of this feedback and the workshop, the council set new goals for our community. Goals that are an aim or desired result. In no particular order they are, ensure a safe and supportive city through fully staffed and equipped public safety department. Implement a community development program that improves opportunities for growth of residents and businesses. Provide support and partnership that empowers community members and volunteers ability to improve Lompoc and determine a sustainable financial plan. Council then reaffirmed its priorities from previous years and directed staff to return with these priorities assigned to the new goals and provide the ability to achieve these. It is important to provide the required levels of core services such as police and fire as well as address infrastructure levels. We've heard that the public safety and economic development are a priority for you. Now we are tasked with identifying the funding for those priorities now and in the future. It bears repeating, our city is responsible for the general fund CalPERS unfunded liability and this obligation is not self-funding. We do not control the investment process or the organization that makes these choices, but we are responsible for paying the difference when the investment fail. This is nearly a $4 million obligation in the 1921 budget cycle, general fund specifically. And like other cities across the state, we must pay. So as you can see by the chart, we are only about of a third of the way into this debt and it will continue to grow over the next 14 years or seven budget cycles before we can begin to see a reduction. Unfortunately, our tax revenue does not cover general fund expenses and our interdepartmental payments for services from the utility department is keeping the general fund department funded. And despite that, we are still dipping into our reserves, failing to maintain our goal of 25% reserve. If you look at the chart, for instance, and you look at just the public safety expense level, which is approximately 15000 $15,043,071, our tax revenue is only $15,855,626. So we are barely covering the cost of public safety with the tax revenue. But the other general fund components, like parks, rec, library, and yes, even our streets, come from general fund. So shuttering the library, closing all the parks, eliminating the rec department, totals approximately 3.2 million, which still does not cover that unfunded liability. It does not address those long-term payment needs and sadly, destroys our quality of life. So yes, we need to generate revenue. Yes, we need to reduce our costs, a little of both, but, to generate revenue with new ideas, maybe a sports complex or an RV park, that also requires revenue that we don't have. So let me remind you the breakdown of our local sales tax. Our local sales tax is seven and three quarters. Six percent of that stays with the state of California. Santa Barbara County keeps 0.25 percent. 0.5% goes to the county and the Lompoc does receive a portion for roads. And finally, Lompoc receives 1% of that seven and three quarters you pay on taxable items. It is an issue, it is a concern, and it's difficult to see that change if we don't invest in ourselves first because others will not want to invest in us if they don't see a viable community willing to do that work. When asked about where that money would go and not to put it in the general fund, I want our community to understand general fund is public safety, the parks, recreation, the library, and streets. So being told not to put money into a general fund means you're telling me not to fund the things that are exactly what you want as part of your community. Nearly 80% of the general fund is public safety. And general fund is all those things you envision as the quality of life for Lompoc. If we continue 
and only cut to try and solve our unfunded liability, we cut people. And that means a reduction in services when it comes to public safety and these other areas. It could be as many as six police officers, four firefighters, one of the librarians, two people in recreation, two and a half people in parks, a planning individual, five people in general support staff. Even if we chose not to cut any of the public safety individuals, reducing the general staffing at City Hall impacts the ability to support those public safety individuals because that's why those individuals in the general staff exist, is to support the HR, the finance, all the additional things that go into supporting those people that are on the ground doing the hard work. Our city departments and your services have already been greatly impacted by our current budget fall, shortfalls. Lompoc Police Department continues to operate with eight officer vacancies, well-trained officers leaving to other agencies. Dispatch is understaffed at a dangerous level. Just three out of nine dispatcher positions filled. And that's not three dispatchers on duty at one time. That's a dispatcher on duty at any one time with potentially an overlap by a second. We examined outsourcing and unfortunately the returns all showed us it would double our costs to outsource it. The Lompoc Fire Department has aging equipment and increased service demands both locally and as noted outside the region. Engine 3 has reached service life of 20 years. Engine 1 will reach its service life in three years and is still operating on the front line. Normal frontline service is 15 years and five years reserve. So I want to give a hats off to our fleet services for maintaining those well beyond expectation. Infrastructure improvements are needed at both fire stations. Station 1 has been found seismically unsafe and susceptible to severe damage in an earthquake. Our park maintenance is underfunded and understaffed to adequately maintain the 200 plus acres of city parks and open space at its minimum level of service. As discussed at Tuesday's council meeting, even with additional funds from SB1, the city is only able to maintain the highest volume city streets. There is little to no funding for residential neighborhoods and alleys. the program. Every space is full. We're going to go out to the street and show you the rest. And this is the city street. It's almost all the way to the fire department. It's all the way to the stop sign on north. We're going to go around the corner next and show you the rest. And people are still trying to get in. Okay, and this is the view on North Avenue. The cars are parked all the way down past water treatment plant and past the Trinity Church on the corner down the street and people are still coming. As I said, the community loves the library. We are very excited to attend all of the amazing programs our library puts on. Unfortunately, not only is the library a little small, but that parking lot is definitely too small for our community and our 200,000 visitors per year. 56 parking spots just isn't enough. And all those books being checked out, that book budget hasn't changed since 2001, but those costs definitely have. So this is not a doom and gloom moment. This is a reality check. This is an opportunity. It is up to you, the residents and business owners, to decide if Lompoc will continue to see itself as a poor community, unable to improve or move forward. Or do we want to be more? Do we want to do better for ourselves, our neighbors, and especially our children? Are we willing to invest in Lompoc, take pride in our community, shoot for the stars, I want you to be a part of this conversation. Please continue to attend council meetings and especially the upcoming budget meetings, April 17th at 6.30 p.m. at City Council Chambers for our next budget discussion. 
Be an advocate for Lompoc's future. Tell us you're willing to invest and see the success and improvement you know our community deserves. Finally, I want to thank you all for being here today. I'd like to give a special thanks to the Chamber for hosting the event. I want to thank Explore Lompoc and all of our business community for all you do to continue to propel our city forward. A special thank you to our Management Service Director, Dean Albro, for all the work on the financial portion of the presentation. Thank you to the Lompoc Police and Fire Officers who keep us safe despite all of the challenges you face. Finally, to all the city staff, thank you for taking pride in what you do, whether it's making sure our lights flip on with a switch, pouring a glass of water as easy as turning a handle, or that first world luxury of flat flushing a toilet and it just magically disappears. All of those who work so hard to make us an amazing community make me proud to call Lompoc home and to be your mayor. I know with all of our hard work, your support and investment, we can make sure Lompoc is more than just a place you have pride in, but a place you brag about. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out today. I know this is a lot to digest. I feel it's my responsibility to just continue educating the community on where we stand. Again, this is not doom and gloom. I look at this as an opportunity. So let's honestly look at how we can invest in each other, invest in our community, and we all rise and improve and be a better community and have those wanting to not just visit, but to move, stay, live, and work here. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your interactions with each other. Feel free to talk to council members about this concern anytime you, you feel the need. We have office hours, emails, and come to council meetings. Have a great afternoon, people.